Good morning, folks. Starting with a story that's close to my heart. If you will remember, a few months after Fukushima, the Arctic seals began showing signs of radiation poisoning, among other illnesses. Although nuclear radiation has never been linked to the incident, many of you will remember Mad Dog Mona and I pushing the USGS into releasing data that walruses and polar bears up there were showing chemotherapy symptoms as well. This designation of endangered may be too little, too late. Luckily, still no major quakes, but the upticks are continuing. Unusual magnitude here off Washington. Anytime France is hit with a magnitude 4, I'll give it a shout. Mid-Atlantic Ridge was shaking a bit and slightly west, having some moderate tremors off the coast of Chiapas and an uptick swarm near Puerto Rico, the British Virgin Islands, and the Dominican Republic. It's been going on two days. Moving to yesterday, I care about this area because underwater you can see where historic landslides have created tsunamis. And considering how close this is to the U.S. coastline and how active it is seismically, I wonder why so many people prefer to worry about the Canary Islands all the way across the ocean. This threat seems much more real. One cyclone left on the Tropic Watch. It's Freda approaching sitting right on top of New Caledonia and will luckily lose cyclone status before moving on. Still a significant weather event we'll watch for two or three days. The rest of Australia and New Zealand should watch the pressure convergence lines for where you can expect precipitation. Europe, admit it, you are sick of me mentioning the same helical cloud movement dumping rain on the same areas. Past 24 hours rainfall, past 3 hours, and shockingly, forecasted precipitation here. Got an isolated low in the south central United States with a Napoleon complex. Warm, moist southern air and dry, cooler northern air are slammed together at this low, producing a good amount of precipitation across the area today. The big blue low pressure system signed a six month lease in the northern Pacific. West coast of Canada and Alaska are still dealing with the Pacific moisture rushing up the leading eastern edge and getting dumped on them. Hopefully this will have changed by the time you check the link, but Bartol cosmic ray monitors are lagging, at least the Muon network is. We are seeing elevated cosmic rays, not too high yet, but we don't have the latest data, do we? After the news yesterday, the solar wind became oddly denser, then cut off in a burst of speedy particles that is still faster than the initial shock. How does that happen? It was not from this original coronal hole. It was from one of the regions behind and south of it that came one to three days later. Can't really have the fastest part of the stream arriving second if they shared a genesis. Either way, it's here, inducing baseline resonance and another line just above 2 hertz. Watching the last two days of visible spectrum sunspots first, down south a region decays while top left a new one arrives. On the north, large umbra, above that high latitude sunspots emerging. We have now seen the sun peppered a bit, also got more coming down here below, but before anyone says that this high latitude sunspot on the north proves solar max is over. Remember, blue leads on the south, red leads in the north. The high latitude spot on the north has that red negative leading and therefore is not reversed. We are not done with this solar maximum. January 3rd and 4th are next alignments here on Ceres 1 JPL. Earth passes between Ceres and Venus while Mercury will heliocentrically oppose Jupiter. I'm through April with the ephemeris and I'll have more future alignments in the coming days. Any bets on the boastfulness of this eruptive region when it faces Earth? NASA? <laughs> Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.